Hello, I'm Andrew, and this is my Series 3 of the weekly podcast, 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. These podcasts build confidence and know-how. Consequently, they can help you achieve happiness at work. By the way, that's also the title of my book, available at Amazon and from the book's website, My Happiness at Work. Now for today's episode in Series 3. Welcome to Episode 17 in 50 Ways to Succeed at Work, Series 3. Today's episode is called Struggle Champion. Spot strugglers at work and offer support. Alex, a diligent project manager, consistently misses deadlines. His once impressive performance has nosedived. Colleagues notice incomplete reports and delayed responses to emails. Concerned team members wonder if there's an underlying issue affecting Alex's productivity. Other work struggles may surface as increased stress and irritability. Sometimes people can withdraw from essential activities such as team meetings, progress reviews and socialising with colleagues during breaks. If your colleagues start seeing you as a resource, you can achieve a career win. One way to accomplish this is to become a struggle champion. It's seldom a paid role. You do it because you can, and it builds relationships. You don't just spot the strugglers. You also offer ways to support them. Let's look at the struggle signs. What do your colleagues at work most commonly struggle with? Do you know how you can best perform as a struggle champion? Jordan, a dedicated HR specialist, appears tired and disheveled. His once impeccable appearance now reflects stress. Frequent sick days and noticeable weight loss hint at a more profound struggle. As a struggle champion, what would you do? Emily is a seasoned developer who used to be cheerful and engaged during team meetings. Lately, she's been snapping at co-workers over minor issues. Her mood swings, raise eyebrows, and colleagues suspect something's amiss. What would you do? These emotional signals also reveal someone who is struggling to cope. And take Chris, a reliable team lead who used to attend every progress review and social event. Recently, though, he's avoided team gatherings and prefers working alone. People notice his absence during brainstorming sessions and coffee breaks and wonder why he's distancing himself. As a struggle champion, what would you do? Signs of a struggle happening may involve many of nine issues. They include time management, anxiety, conflicts, work-life balances, performance, communication issues, low motivation, discrimination and remote working. Well, what about offering support? You need to identify signs of struggle and you do that by paying attention to colleagues and what's happening to them. Use active listening during conversations. For example, ask open-ended questions such as, how are you feeling about your workload? Anything bothering you right now? We missed you at the team celebrations. What's going on for you? There may also be non-verbal cues, such as body language, tone of voice, and facial expressions. You need to choose the right time and place to help someone that you suspect is struggling. This demands a delicate judgment. Aim to agree on a private moment to talk. Start by expressing concerns such as, I've noticed you've seemed stressed lately. Is everything okay? If it seems right, offer help such as, Is there anything I can do to support you? Everyone's needs are different, so aim to offer flexible solutions, not some cookie-cutter notional theory. Make your offer of help specific to their situation. Consider working together on a task or project. And then there's promote self-care. Once you've found your struggler and begun to offer support, be sure to put the focus back on their responsibility to take care of themselves. Suggest short breaks and wellness activities such as yoga, meditation or walks during the day. Offer a lunchtime walk with a stressed colleague. To connect them to resources, Draw people's attention to available work facilities. These may include employee assistant programs or counselling services and mentoring. Being a struggle champion doesn't require grand gestures. Small acts of kindness and empathy can make a significant difference in someone's work life. 
So what are the dangers of being a struggle champion? It's commendable to offer help and support to struggling colleagues at work, but there can be downsides to consider. Some individuals prefer to be self-reliant and solve their own problems alone. When you offer help, they might perceive it as an intrusion or a challenge to their autonomy. People often want to protect their professional image. Accepting help might make them feel vulnerable or expose their limitations to others. When you assist someone, they might feel obliged to return the favour. Pressure to do this can create discomfort and strain relationships. Not everyone trusts their co-workers' motives. Some of your colleagues may wonder if you have a hidden agenda or strings attached to the help offered. It's crucial that you consider how you offer to help and how it will be received. Model a readiness to give and receive assistance. And my final thoughts on this, struggle champions endear themselves to work colleagues through their support and encouragement. They may only sometimes have the exact answer to the issue. Most important is exercising your empathic support and readiness to listen to colleagues' concern without showing superiority or criticism. You've been listening to an episode of Series 3 of my weekly podcast, 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. You can hear the other podcasts at the 50ways.site. That's 50.site. There are nearly a 100 titles and you can search for any issue that interests you. If you have any questions, you can always drop me a line from there. Also, check out my book, Happiness at Work. It's packed with great stories, compelling advice and suggestions for tackling real issues that you can encounter at work. It's at Amazon or at the book's website, myhappinessatwork.com. There's also an audio version if you prefer listening. Join me next week for another unmissable episode in Series 3. Bye for now.